Hello and welcome to this new episode of I Dream of Wise. I am currently playing Uncharted The Lost Legacy and I'm really enjoying it a lot. The Uncharted series is also famous for its sound. All of the games sound phenomenal, they won tons of awards. And this game especially has so much detail in every sound. It's really incredible for a sound designer to play and to listen to this game. It's really inspiring in terms of what you can achieve with sound. There is a big part of the game where you drive this jeep around in a pretty wide area. And the jeep sounds phenomenal, of course. The sound of the engine, the sound of the tires, the squeals, the sound of dirt, it's incredible. And also the sound of like bumps when you bump into stuff, it's phenomenal. Also, they built an incredible dialogue system for when you drive and for when you get out of the car. For example, the two protagonists, the moment you start driving, they start talking about things related to the plot of the game or they just start random conversations. And uh, let's say you stop and you want to take a look around, uh, then um, the moment you get out of the car, the protagonist says something like, oh wait, hold on, hold on that thought, and the conversation stops. And then the moment you decide to go back in the car, she says something like, oh, what was I saying? And then they start the conversation from where they left it. It's incredible, it works super well. There is one thing, though, that I was thinking about while playing it, and it's the fact that when you're driving, you clearly hear the engine of the car, but it's very low in the mix. And the two girls talk as if the volume of the surroundings was pretty low, okay? So they talk kind of like how I'm talking right now, so not at a very high volume. While well, instead they're driving a very loud car. I mean, it's a Jeep, and you're driving fast probably, right? So they should talk at a much louder volume. Actually, they should talk at a volume of voice that depends on how loud the surroundings are, the Jeep, but also some environmental sounds, right? So I started from this concept and I did a test in WISE and Unity to see how something like that would work. And I want to show you the Unity project first. So let's take a look at it. So this is an emitter, it emits an engine sound and here is a white cube, it emits just white noise. On the top right of the screen, you will see this slider. And this slider allows me to set the RPMs of the car. One last thing, the dialogue is set to 2D. Okay, so let's listen to how this sounds. Switch containers allow you to group objects according to the different alternatives that exist within a game. Each alternative is represented in the switch container by a switch or state. Switch containers allow you to group objects according to the different alternatives that exist within a game. Each alternative is represented in the switch container by a switch or state. Switch containers allow you to group objects according to the different alternatives that exist within a game. Each alternative is represented in the switch container by a switch or state. So as you may have noticed, the moment the car engine sounded louder with higher RPMs, my voice sounded a bit louder as well, as if it wanted to be louder than the car. The same thing goes for the white cube. The closer I got to the cube and the louder my voice was. So what is happening under the hood is uh, this. So I recorded three different variations of the same two lines of dialogue. This is the first line and this is the second line. I recorded them in uh, piano, mezzo forte and forte. So with three different intensities. And then I split them in the same exact points. So what happens in WISE is that if the external noise is uh, pretty quiet, it will play the piano line. But if the external noise suddenly becomes louder, then the line will switch to a louder alternative. So let's take another look at the Unity project. And this time I will enable this label, and it's a label that will appear on the top left of the screen here. And it will show us the state of the switch group that controls the dynamic and uh, it reflects the loudness of the environment around us. Switch containers allow you to group objects according to the different alternatives that exist within the game. 
Each alternative is represented in the switch container by a switch or state. Switch containers allow you to group objects according to the different alternatives that exist within a game. Each alternative is represented in the switch container by a switch or state. So we noticed that when we were approaching the cube, it went from piano to mezzo forte and from mezzo forte to forte. And the same thing goes with the car. The higher the RPMs, the higher the dynamics of the dialogue. So let's take a look at how it works in uh, WISE. So this is a master playlist and it's set to continuous and it plays the two lines of dialogue. I could have created just one playlist to play everything, but I prefer to do it this way. So inside of each line, there are a bunch of switch containers. And uh, each switch container contains what we saw here. So the first switch container contains these three clips. The second contains these three clips and so on. So let's listen to the clips in Reaper first. I want only to listen to the first one. Switch containers allow you... Okay, let's listen to the second one. To group objects. The third one, according to the different alternatives that exist within a game. So as you may have noticed, the breakpoints happen also in the middle of words. For example, in here, it's according to... It's according according to we can hear the a of according at the end of the second clip and we hear the rest of the word in here according to according to these were the easiest points to split the lines because in here as you can see it's almost silence and in here as well even if it's in the middle of a word according to but it's a very very simple place to put a breakpoint so let's go back to wise so each switch container, of course, switches according to the external loudness switch group. And here are the three lines, forte, mezzo forte, and piano. So how does the switch know when to change between piano and mezzo forte, or mezzo forte and forte, etc.? My first idea was uh, only related to the car engine. I only wanted to design a simple system, so I only wanted the car engine RPMs to affect the dynamics of the dialogue. So the higher the RPMs, the louder the dialogue. But that is very simple, and uh, I thought, well, we designed this system, maybe we can do something a little bit more flexible. So maybe we can take into consideration also external sounds, like environmental sounds. So I thought, we can use the meter plugin. The meter plugin, it's this amazing effect that allows you to follow the envelope of a bus and to use that as an RTPC. We have two modes, we have peak and RMS, and I'm using RMS because I want a more uh, average loudness level, I don't care about the peaks. So there is a little bit of uh, attack and release just to smoothen it out, and uh, I'm using this meter plugin to drive this external loudness RTPC. And then if we go to game syncs and we take a look at the external loudness switch group, we can see that the RTPC is driving the changes in the switch. Okay, so when the external loudness is lower than minus 36 dBs, then the dialogue will be piano. And when it gets a little bit louder, it becomes mezzo forte. And from minus 30 dBs upward, then it's forte. And this works. It works really well. The thing is, the first thing I did was to route all of the elements that I wanted to affect the dynamics of the dialogue system to one specific audio bus. But that would have changed the busing system in the master mixer hierarchy. I still want my mix to be flexible and not affected by a dialogue dynamic system. So I discarded that option and instead I created this auxiliary bus. This is not an audio bus, it's an auxiliary bus. So we can send stuff to it. As you can see here, my car engine has the car bus as its output bus and it's also sending a 0 dB post fader to the external noise auxiliary bus. And the same thing goes for the wide noise. It's routed to the white noise audio bus and it's sending to the external noise auxiliary bus. 
So this external noise auxiliary bus is a specific mix of certain effects in the game that we want to affect the dynamics of the dialogue. And this is where we put the wise meter. But as you can see in here, there is a wise gain plugin as well. And the reason why is because the external noise auxiliary still outputs sound. And uh, if we send the car engine to both the car audio bus and the external noise auxiliary bus, well, we're duplicating the sound. So it will sound much louder and we don't want that to happen. We want the mix to be affected only by our main volume and our main audio bus, not by this auxiliary bus, whose only purpose is to drive the Dynamics dialog system. So what I did here was put a wise gain plugin and bring it down to minus 96.3, which is completely inaudible. And you may think, well, why didn't you just bring down the fader here? Well, the thing is that the wise meter plugin works post fader. So if we bring this down, it will affect the output of the wise meter. So by leaving it at zero dB and by turning it down after the wise meter did its magic, then we are able to still get the RTPC and we don't hear the audio that is routed into the external noise auxiliary bus. Also, in this way, we can create a customized mix that affects the dynamic dialogue. So for example, we may want the car engine to affect the dynamics of the dialogue more than the white noise. So we can increase the send of the car engine to the external noise by 3 dBs, and we can decrease the white noise by, let's say, minus 6. So even if we're very close to the white noise source, maybe our dialogue will reach just the mezzo forte and not all the way up to forte. But the car engine, maybe we want it to sound louder in the game and uh, a way to make it sound louder could be just to make the people shout more if they're close to that car engine. So we can just increase the external noise send so that the wise meter will perceive a louder signal and it will reach higher dynamics of the dialogue system faster. So this was my prototype of a dynamic dialogue system in WISE that is driven by the loudness of the surroundings. Now, let's make a few considerations. This dialogue system requires three different dynamics per line of dialogue. And I don't know how many lines of dialogue are there in Uncharted, but I believe there are many, many thousands. So if you have to multiply it by three then that is a lot of work. Also for the voice actors, because one thing is to have the voice actors recording only lines in piano, but if they have to record also mezzo forte and forte, then they will be exhausted way faster because it takes a lot of physical effort to speak at louder dynamics for hours and hours during the recording sessions. Also, this system can sound a bit weird, so you have to spend some time testing the transition. One thing you really don't want is your dialogue to sound weird. That brings the player out of the immersion immediately. Of course, you can learn how to record lines in order to get better transitions. So, for example, it's very important to say the lines more or less in the same way by pausing in the same points and using more or less the same attitude. Like, for example, you can't say the forte line in a more aggressive way. You just have to say it as if there was more noise around you. One thing to consider also, I didn't say it before, is that the lines don't have to last exactly the same. Our playlist system works so that even if the clips don't last exactly the same, that is totally fine. The line will play very smoothly anyway. This is a very scalable system and uh, it doesn't take a lot of work to set it up and you can save this structure as a preset in WISE and you can implement thousands of lines of dialogue at once. One last thing I want to emphasize is that we made all of this system just within WISE. In Unity, the only things I did were loading the sound banks and just play the three events. The event that plays the car engine, the event that plays the white noise, and the event that plays the dialogue. The only programming I had to do was in order to get the slider working and affect the RPMs in WISE. And uh, this little label that displays the switch we're currently in 
But this is not something necessary in order for this system to work. Everything we did for the system was within WISE. And this proves how powerful this tool is. Sometimes we think that we can create very cool audio systems only with the help of audio programmers. But I think this proves that we can still do a lot just within WISE. So I hope this video was helpful and that it was clear enough as the project was quite complicated and uh, I went through a lot of iterations while designing the system. I prefer to use a more uh, narrative way of explaining it rather than building it during the video. So I hope it was clear enough. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.